in the next issue that hits shelves, actually. Oh, wow. And uh, heard it here first. I haven't talked about it yet, but yeah, that's happening in the next issue. There we go, Splash Pages fans. Um, <laughs> Lord of Omar, come to my hand. I, Lion Oak, command it. Thundercats, ho! And you're watching the Dorkening. All right. Hi, this is Carrie from Splash Pages here at Turficon, and we are interviewing the amazing Philip Kennedy Johnson. Hi. Hey, it's great to meet you. It's wonderful to meet you. I, I have to admit that I first got into your work because of Hulk. Oh, sure. Because, of course, I, I was a kid growing up where the Incredible Hulk was like, oh, he's a big guy, just smash things. And in the past 10 years, he has become an incredibly complex character. Yeah. And you've had a couple of good writers going on. And uh, what, what made you want to write this Hulk the way he is? Because he is just a cruel, cruel man right now. <laughs> he is. He's rough right now. I, well, the, the genius of the Hulk concept is that it's an idea that any little kid can understand. But the deeper you look into it, the deeper you, the closer you examine the idea, you can tell all these amazing nuanced stories. Hulk can be like a metaphor for so many things. And um, I just wanted to tell a story in which Hulk was like the monster of the movie. You know, like that was kind of, that was part of Stan Lee's original vision for the character uh, that I wanted to bring back. I feel like over the years he kind of got sucked more into like the superhero kind of world, but he was intended to be the monster, you know, and I wanted mm -hmm. to see that, that part of it. Plus after the, uh, after the events of Immortal Hulk, but even more so the, the Donny Cates run, I felt like the, the seeds were planted for them to have a very antagonistic relationship, Hulk and Banner, I mean. Oh yeah. Um, so it was just a really great setup to give us a story where Hulk is more like the monster from the ring or it follows or the thing that actually stalks Banner from behind his eyes, the thing that he's just really terrified of. So instead of, um, instead of the old, you wouldn't like me when I'm angry thing, we've got a situation where anytime Banner is too close to making a friend or finding a moment's peace or being happy or getting the thing he wants, Hulk just burns it all down and it's almost like a it's almost like a metaphor for addiction kind of like mm -hmm. the the what did I do last night kind of a thing where he just this thing inside of himself just can't let him find success or happiness yeah it could, uh, like particularly with Jason Aaron's run um, he made it so that Banner was basically torturing the Hulk right. and leaving him with like I don't know what I'm doing but Hulk just turned this back on him so hard it did yeah. and um, so you, you got to use the um, green door concept from yes. Al Ewing and the below, below all. And that was awesome. Did you, have you been looking forward to using that? Is, or are, this, are we going to get more in the Hulkscape yes. going on? Yes, we are. We're going to see, we're going to see the green door and the one below all and all that in the next issue that hits shelves actually. Oh, wow. And uh, heard it here first. I haven't talked about it yet, but yeah, that's happening in the next issue. There we go, Splash Pages fans. Um, <laughs> Let's see, yeah, I wanted to start tying it in more directly to like the uh, the issue one story that we did that introduced Eldest and talked about the mother of whores and everything was was meant to be just set up to give us all these different monsters, these new creatures from the Marvel bestiary. Some old and familiar, but mostly new. I wanted to see a lot of new new creatures. Um, I just wanted to set up a lot of little like short arcs that they introduce a new monster, a new part of the American South. It tells a lot of stories about the creepy sides of America. Um, but fans make us make it seem like they really wanted to see more about Elvis and Mother of Horrors. So we're bringing it back there like right now in this arc. We're going nice. to see a lot more tie-ins with with Eldis. Uh, we're going to use Charlie more intrinsically in the story as well. She's, gonna, she's about to become a, an even more central part of the story. Oh, very cool. It was, it was important to introduce Charlie because it's another character through which to show the Hulk-Banner relationship. You know, somebody who has a different relationship with Hulk than she has with Banner. Um, so we're about to kind of recombine all those ideas. Okay. And then um, I'm just going to go in. The, the Southern Gothic field, that's been kind of kind of popular recently. It's a, We've been getting some really good dark horror Americana yeah. stuff. And so I love that that was going on. I also loved it, and this isn't so much horror, but I, to me it kind of was. Uh, Warlords of Appalachia was. How did you? Where did you think of like just New Civil War and Kentucky seceds, and we have all these 
blue people. Well, I, I lived <laughs> in Kentucky for a good bit, and um, actually, that so that first issue of that story came out in October 2016, like right before the election, and the uh, all the political nailed it. <laughs> yeah, thanks. The uh, the political divisions that were all kind of tearing up the country at that time, just the idea of what a Trump presidency could be. Um, the just the the deep divisions, the way that political divisions between the left and right were getting deeper and deeper and more just just rougher. You know, I wanted to see, I wanted to explore a version of America that took place after the second American Civil War, and Kentucky has become an occupied nation within U.S. borders, like the Afghanistan uh, Afghanistan of the American South. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of my. It was my therapy for like all the political stuff that was happening then. Of course, the, since then it's only gotten worse, sadly. Yeah. But um, yeah, that's that's what that story was about. Are, are we going to get any more in that area? I don't know. It's been a while now. I, it, I hope so. It, I would like to see it revisited. I would I, love to do I more, honestly. Fun. Well, you, and I, you just are retiring from active military service. I correct? am. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much for your service. Yeah, by of the course, way. it's an honor. Um, so you'll you'll have a bit more time on your hands, although. I will. Okay, so. With that, we're going to hop real quick into Crocodile Black. Okay. Um, so this is another one where this is a very chilling sort of comic. It's it's so mental scape that like I think I know what's going on, but I, I'm not sure if like the kid when he's getting the boots and everything. You know, you have all this the war journals and there's a lot of mental illness involved there is. in that. And so I can't tell exactly like okay, so what exact which one was Crocodile Black because the time's jumping back and forth. So you have a really good mystery going on here. Thank you. Yeah, I'm very proud of that story. Crocodile Black. It's you see three issues are on shelves now. There's two to go. Mm -hmm. um, it's so when COVID was at its peak, like towards the very beginning before we really knew how to deal with it or what was going to happen. There was all this uncertainty. The comics that were coming out at that time were not really acknowledging any of that. Like we didn't really, we didn't see any stories on the shelves. Well, not many at least that, that showed us a world that we were living in at the moment. You know, there, nobody was wearing masks in the story. Um, everyone was packed in tight. You know, there's none of the distancing was happening. Um, I don't know, I just felt like it was a missed opportunity to tell stories about the world that we were living in. And I've since then, I've kind of had the story kind of kick around in my head about somebody, about honestly, just this loser who was having a hard time um, figuring out what he wanted his life to be. It, it deals with the way that, remember when people were starting to just walk away from their jobs? Yeah. It's, it was kind of about that, um, where people were just walking away from their entry level jobs or their, um, their college degrees that they didn't really, that they never really wanted. Mm -hmm. They just it's like, screw this, the world's ending. I want to do what I want to do. Um, and that really stuck with me. So this is about this guy who doesn't like where his life is at. And he, he finds his true calling over the backdrop of COVID and his true calling is to become a dangerous man. Um, so yeah, he struggles with his own mental illness, but through that he actually finds what he really wants to be, which is a killer. And it's pretty, Goddamn morbid, guys. It's it's a great comic. <laughs> it is. But okay, last question for you: Batman and Robin. Yes. Coming up. Okay. I'm really excited for that for you. Oh, thank you. But I'm scared because also issue 19 of the Incredible Hulk is going to be the 800th issue of Hulk in general. And you mentioned the other day on Word Balloon that that was going to be like this huge fight with the eldest, and then the story was going to go on. I'm scared. Are we going to lose you? No, I'm going nowhere. Oh, okay. Very yeah, I'll awesome. Be, Hulk is one of those cold dead hand situations where I'm going to be writing Hulk a long time. All right. And you have long-term plans for Batman and Robin as well, right? I, I have long-term plans for Batman and Robin, but also for the Incredible Hulk. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. It's I, great to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I very much appreciate this. Oh, me, too. Thanks for watching. See you later, guys. Excelsior!